I would be remiss if, uh, if I were not to say Happy Columbus Day today, because it is Columbus Day, talking about leftist insanity. Uh, part of the, the leftist insanity we have today is where we're told that we cannot celebrate our, our, our heroes. Uh, we cannot honor those who built the civilization that we all now live in and enjoy living in and prefer living in. We, we, we all prefer this civilization to any other civilization on the globe currently, or really to any other civilization, civilization that has ever existed on the globe. We all prefer this one. If we were given a time machine and told that we can live anywhere at any point in history, I think we would all probably choose right now. Which is not to say that right now is, is perfectly wonderful and we don't have serious problems. We do. But when it comes down to it, when given a choice, I, you know, I don't think we're going to choose to go anywhere else. And we have our ancestors to thank for that. Pioneers, explorers, discoverers settlers, founders. We have, we have them to thank for, but the, but the left says we cannot thank them. We have to hate them and despise them. And so they're going to spend today screaming about a fictional version of history where Europeans introduced rape, pillage, and slavery to the peaceful and noble inhabitants of the new world. But of course, it would, it would have been impossible for the Europeans to introduce rape, pillage, and slavery to an Indian culture where rape, pillage, and slavery were totally commonplace and had been for centuries. So you, you notice something about these self-hating, white guilt-ridden people. Uh, you notice that they would never suggest that the brutality of many Indian tribes should somehow outweigh whatever they accomplished. Even their propensity for cannibalism, we, we are told, must be understood within the, con- within the historical and cultural context. Yet somehow the sins of the Europeans, or the alleged sins in some cases, uh, automatically negate what the European explorers achieved and discovered. Have you noticed that? So, so with, with everybody else in history, with all other cultures, with all other people, there's got to be a historical context, cultural context. We have to put it all into perspective. But when it comes to Europeans, they're the only ones who we have to take from their point in history and bring them into the modern world and judge them by modern standards. They're the only ones we do that to. But, of course, the biggest objection, the most common objection um, to Columbus is this idea that Columbus was a, was a genocidal maniac who came uh, to the New World hoping to pillage and enslave a peaceful people. And it's true, of course, that some of the Indians he encountered were peaceful. But we have obviously taken this image of the peaceful Indian and we have stretched it and turned it into this really ridiculous caricature. Because they were not all peaceful. And in fact, peace did not reign across the New World. It was a violent, violent place. Also bear in mind that there was a tribe called the Caribs, and they reigned terror on the region where Columbus landed. These were, these were violent people who feasted on human flesh. You have uh, the Caribs not only eating children, but raping other children to produce babies who they would then eat. All right. This is the kind of thing that would go on among some tribes in the New World. And the fact that we have to deal with when when talking about this clash of civilizations is that rape, slavery, mass murder, etc., all of these things were already a normal part of life in the Americas before the Europeans came. This was a brutal time. It was brutal across the globe for everyone. Everyone played basically by the same brutal rules. You went in search of new lands, and when you found the new land, you fought for it. That's the way it worked across the globe for everybody. That's how Europeans operated. That's how the Indians operated. That's how everyone operated. The world was settled and civilized this way. We may not like it. It may make our tummy hurt to think about it. We may look back on that now and say, oh, they were so, they they were barbaric. And maybe they were in comparison to us in some ways, but that's the way it worked. Now that doesn't excuse any one particular atrocity, but it does put everything into perspective. And I think when we talk about Columbus, very often it seems like we divorce him from his context and we hold him to a standard that nobody else from his time period is held to. And that just doesn't seem fair to me. It doesn't seem fair that Columbus is the, is the, is the one single person or the Europeans in general are the people who we hold to this, to this ridiculous standard. Now, we know it's, it's, it's true that Columbus was a very flawed man, 
But his flaws were mostly the flaws shared by all men of all cultures during that time. And he was also a great and gifted man, and his greatness and his gifts were not shared by all men. There was nothing unique or especially different about his flaws, but in terms of his gifts and what he achieved, that was unique and that was different. It took this one particular man to do what he did, which is to sail across these unknown waters to this unknown place and begin the process that would eventually result in the establishment of the greatest civilization the world has ever known. And again, I remind you, it is a civilization that we all live in and we would prefer this civilization over any other. And I think he deserves to be celebrated for that. If you ask me, he deserves to be celebrated for that. And if we're going to say, no, we can't celebrate him for that, uh, we, we, we have to hate him, we have to tear down his statues, we have to spit on his memory because of the bad things that he did, then just bear in mind that we have to do the same thing to pretty much anyone else who lived for almost the entirety of human civilization up until very recently. Certainly including the heroes of Native American tribes. Because these were also... Largely brutal people who played by brutal rules. And when the Europeans came and they did practice slavery, for instance, which, again, doesn't justify it. But the Indians, they weren't surprised by that because that's what they did to each other. They, 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 this, well, this is just how the world works. If you get, you get into a fight with another neighboring tribe or civilization and you lose, they're going to take you as slaves. This was not, it was not anything, wasn't new to them. They weren't shocked by this. In fact, when you read about uh, uh, Cortez and his clash with the Aztecs, you'll read that in some cases, the, the only thing that really shocked the Indians is uh, it, it's not that, the, that uh, Cortez would take prisoners or slaves. It's, it's, it's how humanely those prisoners were treated. Keep in mind, these were people who were used to how the Aztecs operate, which is when they took you as a prisoner, they would fatten you up and rip your heart out, and then eat you. So that's what they were used to for, for how slaves and, and prisoners were treated. So admittedly, it wasn't a very high bar for the Spanish to get over, but they did get over that bar at least. So we have to look at them in their historical context and then and judge them based on that. Like, where was the bar set back in that period of time? And did they get over the bar, or did they fall under it, or did they basically meet the bar? That, that, that I think, is the question we should ask ourselves. And I think we're going to find, for the most part, they at the very least were par. You know, they, they very least, they were at the bar. And I think, in many cases, they, they got over it. So, happy Columbus Day, everyone. Let's celebrate uh, this great man and his great achievement, achievement that we all, whether we like to admit it or not, are uh, very thankful for today.